You're listening to the Cynic Radio Podcast. Now, your hosts, Igri and Cynic. You are listening to episode 34 of the Cynic Radio Podcast, and I'm normally your host, Cynic, but not this week. This week, we've scoured from Westeros to Woodbury to find a short bus full of experts to discuss love, sex, and marriage as we do our tribute to the greatest show known to man, Love Line. The usual suspects are here, Igri, Ryan, and Jules, but joining us this week, mostly because they're showing a Wonder Woman sold out, are good friends Mark and Addie. So put the kids to bed, turn the lights down low, maybe run a bath, and keep your toaster close. Because we are the Cynic Radio Podcast, and we found out what a cuckold is, so you don't need to. All right, here we go. This time around, it's time for... What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. What is love? We're going to answer your questions. We're all unqualified, and we're probably going to give you some bad advice, but it might be good advice. Why don't you go ahead, listen through the show... You be the judge. All right, so our first question comes from Diana. She's 28. She says, I've been dating this guy for about a month now, and I really like him. Problem is, I have herpes. I never know when it's the right time to tell someone this, and I don't want to scare him away. What do you think? Well, Julie, what do you think? That is a hard one. I uh, sympathize with anybody who has to deal with this sort of situation because that has to be the one thing that you don't know... I mean, you tell someone too early, it feels like you're just scaring everyone away. But if you tell someone too late, you're going to scare people away because you were dishonest. I Personally, I'd want to know that pretty quickly. I mean, I'm not saying you have to be like, hi, my name is Diana and I have herpes. But <laughs> I mean, I do think like if you're going to go on like a couple dates or whatever, I think that needs to come out fairly quickly into dating. I would definitely say by like a second or third date, that might be something you need to disclose. Mark, you got any idea on this? You got anything to put in? Well, you can always have your um, your herpes medication, like denim jacket laying around <laughs> so, so they can get the hint of <laughs> I'm sponsored by this medication. <laughs> don't, uh, don't get too close. No, I think it's definitely in the beginning. Um, it's, I would, I would say, think it's part of the first few dates that you have you probably should put that out there like if you have a kid or you know if you have <laughs> had jail time in the past or something like that you probably want to be <laughs> up forward and say you know i have felonies sorry about that or herpes or herpes <laughs> well it, it goes like this the second you're going to get past a high five you probably should say something but have a neat story to go along with it be like Oh, and by the way, I caught herpes by being on a podcast with a bunch of uh, strangers that nobody knew anything about. You know, uh, you know I, I caught herpes in a NASCAR accident. Uh, you know, um, be straightforward, because if not, you're you're looking at some trouble and possibly some litigation if you uh, pass it on without uh, letting your partner know. So are you saying to let somebody know, like... Within like the first well, day of meeting them. Well, that's what you did them? for me, right? <laughs> if the uh, if the interest is there, quite honestly, if you if you're interested beyond anything past a friendship, that's the appropriate time. Uh, holding it past that, like building tension, building interest, and things like that, going further without letting someone know, that's a trap, and that's a bad trap to get into. So I, I agree with Cynic. It should be as early as, like you said, you're going to get past high fives or sitting across a table from each other sharing a meal, maybe you need to say something if it's getting any further. So our next question comes from Rochelle. She's 22. She says, I found a boyfriend that I really love. The issue is the sexual experiences that I've had in my life far outweigh his experiences. When we met, I was actually dating a woman, and he was okay with that information. But the more he's finding out about my history, the more resentful he seems to get. Can this relationship go past any further if he can't accept my past? Ryan, what do you think? Probably not. It depends on the... I, to be honest, I think it depends on how much he's going to question. Because if he's the type, you know, that is more like out of sight, out of mind, where you he, you can you can he'll just leave it alone and you don't talk about it and he doesn't talk about it and that's it, then, you know, maybe stop right th- stop with as much as you've told him and hold hope that he doesn't hold it against you. But if he if he's gonna keep pressing and keep using your past against you, then it, it, it's not gonna work. And I don't 
I, you know, it would take a lot of work, um, maybe even therapy, because maybe there's there he has his own underlying issues, but it might take a lot of work to get past whatever whatever problems he has. Because obviously there is, he's got some issues if he can't let go of your own past and your own history. If you're faithful to him and 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 you didn't do anything illegal in the past, then it shouldn't really matter. And if he can't let go of it, then it's probably not going to work. Because and people don't change, so if that's an issue now, it'll be an issue later. Oh, yeah. Like, um, it sounds like this guy's got a few issues. And um, if you can't get past those, what are you where are you going to go from there? Um, If he keeps throwing it in your face, is it uh, really worthwhile? Uh, You know, like you two are saying, really, somebody's past is their past. And if somebody you're with can't get past what you did in a former life, really, because it seems like Right now, you're interested in him. But if he's going to keep bringing up who you used to be interested in, obviously, he's got some kind of hang up you can't get past. So realistically, the best thing is to to cut ties, you know, remain friends maybe and move on because it's just it's not going to work if he can't let it go because you're not trying to drudge up his past and whatever he did. Just my thought. But what if she has a cool name like Finger Cuffs? Hey, Finger Cuffs is a cool name. I mean, who didn't have a nickname like that once? (laughs) So our next question comes all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Leslie says, I've been thinking about going to an adult store and checking out some adult toys, but I'm nervous and I'm not sure what types of toys to start off with. Any of you have any recommendations? Now, Cynic, I know you're at the adult store every other Friday. I work there. (laughs) What, What do you got? What do you think? Listen, you got to start off with something small. I mean, if you whip out the portable fist to start, you're going to scare your uh, you're going to scare your partner out. Anything that's uh, you know controlled by the end of a like a weed whacker that you have to pull to start, you may you know that's more in the expert or I like to call the IG section. Go with something small, something not assuming, something that's not going to run up your electric bill or you're going to go through batteries every other day. So you're saying she should not start with the anal intruder four thousand. Nothing more than the one thousand. You start going to the four, you get the attachments. It's you know you don't know whether you're going to have sex with it or you're going to you know whack your weeds or blow your lawn off. Well, and it does take four hours to wipe the smile from your face after using it. So there is that. Julie, you do seem to know a lot about this. <laughs> don't judge us, Julie. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> Julie, what do you think? I, I would definitely agree with Cynic on this because uh, you do want to start off small. Small is good. And I she never really said she wanted to do it with somebody else, though. <laughs> this could just be for her own personal use. But I still would recommend starting off small. I think I think most people <laughs> don't really want to dive into the 4000 series of anything when they're starting off. So I'm pretty confident she's going to make the right choice there and start in the petite section, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, definitely. But the great thing about that is once you do start off small with, you know, some sort of toy, you get to realize there are lots of different varieties out there and the smaller ones will be great, but then you'll see what each <clears throat> level can bring you. <laughs> each new level. Okay. She cleared her throat like like no. she's speaking from experience. <clears throat> <laughs> Although, if, if you're going to go to the high end of the spectrum, make sure you hide it when you have company over because they will see it and they will judge you. Well, I don't usually have other people in my bedroom besides my the, husband. But. And he may be judging you, but, but that's yeah. okay. So our next question comes from Phil. He's from Dallas. He's 34. He says, I love hanging out with my best friend, Tim. He's a great wingman when we go out. Problem is... He's also the world's biggest cock block when I do start vibing with somebody. He always immediately butts in and somehow takes the woman I was interested in home. How can I tell him to back off without looking petty? Ryan, you are the world's greatest wingman. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, just tell him. If he's your, if he's a good friend, then just, t- just say it. You should have that relationship like I can't think of any of my good friends that if I felt like if I felt the same that I couldn't just say hey you know help me out here you know like like you just have you should have that relationship um it doesn't really seem petty I mean if, if he's that if he's that successful then he can you know give it give give up for a day and not try you know and, and I don't think he should have a problem with it so uh I would say just talk to him about it it's not petty it's just hey maybe, maybe he'd either he doesn't realize it 
or it's it's kind of a game to him and he's just being a dick about it. I mean, that, I know people who, who are kind of like that as well. So, you know, either way, you could talk to him and and try to have him, uh, you know, ease up a little bit when you're when you're trying. You have like a code or something. So, like, you, you know, he knows when to not to encroach on your uh, space. <laughs> is the code punching him in the face? It might be, but hey, this is a guy question. So, ladies, we're going to go to another guy. Mark, what do you think? You know, Ryan, I think you're onto something because... Uh, you know, I have been in that situation where, you know, he gets her to the point where she has to make a decision on who she's interested in. So he's made it a game to try and compete with his buddy. So, you know, that's, that's not very healthy. And of course, if you're friends with him and, and, you know, it's not petty when it comes to, you know, sex or women between guy friends, right? So you say, man, you know, I stake my claim over there first, you know, lay off, um, you know, if you need me to be wingman, you know, for you, you know. Uh, you know, I got you back. Our next question comes from Trevor. He's 19 in Utah and says, I just turned 19 and my girlfriend has let me know that she is pregnant. I know I'm not ready to be a dad, but she doesn't want to give up the baby or get an abortion. What do I do? Well, oh, I'll, I'll take. <laughs> Nobody wants to feel that uh, question. <laughs> you, we make choices and you have to deal with the consequences. Uh, so you got you to gotta own it. That's it. I mean, you make, you know, you make those, you make decisions in life. And I think any, any decision you make there, you, you, especially, uh, you know, in an intimate situation, you're, you're aware of the potential consequences and whether or not it was an accident or I mean, it was too risky or not risky enough. Like that's, that's, a, that's something that comes with it. And unfortunately now you've got about 18 to 21 years of, uh, of burden slash the greatest thing in your life. So you got to own it if she doesn't want to. I mean, you know, a, it's the moral thing to do to be there and, and deal with it like an adult and, and, and a man and, and legally you have to deal with it. So, um, you know, you, you just have to own it and accept that you're going to be a dad and enjoy the next few months of freedom because the rest of your life's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. I would argue that probably greater than 50% of all pregnancies, people aren't ready at the time. But most of those people are going to eventually be happy with what happens. You know, if, if you especially if you take part and are a father and are a caregiver to this child, you're going to get joy that you didn't expect you would get. And if you form a relationship with your girlfriend and then you're together raising this child, even better. Now, if you're not, you still have to be good to each other. So, you know, although this child is in the picture, be good to the mother, even if you guys aren't together, because that is still your child's mother. So you need to remember that you don't want to talk bad about the mother and you don't want the mother to talk bad about you. So you have to be good to each other, even if you're not together. But nobody's ready. Even people that say they're ready, aren't ready because you don't know what you're doing. I mean, yeah, there's books out there, but you know what? Every kid is different. So nobody's ready. Nobody's really ready. And I can tell you from experience, I'm, I'm a product of that. Like I know that when, when that happened, uh, you know, I, I never got the exact, um, you know, I never asked the questions, but I, you know, I've kind of been able to figure out that, um, you know, I think my dad probably would have had it, had the abortion if, 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 he, if, if it was up to him and my mom was not going to do it. And, uh, you know, it ended up where, you know, my brother and I are, are the, you know, the, the, you know, the, being the world to my dad and he was a great parent. And I know for a fact that he wasn't sure if he was even going to be able to, to, to handle it. So, so yeah, I think that, you know, Ig is completely right. Like, you know, it's one, it, it, it may be, it may be stressful and I joke about it being a burden. I don't really, you know, I don't, um, it, but at the end of the day, you know, it, will be one of the best things in your life if you if you face it uh you just have to own it and you have to accept that that's going to be your life and uh you'll find a lot of meaning a lot of value in it it's just your life's gonna be a little bit different from from probably what you expected a few months ago it may sound a bit like a motivational poster but anything worth having is going to be difficult so you got to remember that so even though it will be a burden if it's worth it you're gonna have to put yourself to the challenge it's it's a good thing Let's make it forward. Anybody else with that one? Didn't think so. <laughs> All right. This one's a quick hitter. Sarah from 25. Sarah is 25. She's in Seattle. She says, okay, why do guys like boobs so much? Cynic, that's you first. <laughs> well, 
Why do, do we, we like them so much? Like an evolutionary <laughs> biologist or somebody to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> because they're the greatest thing ever. That's why. I mean, there is no explanation. There is no rhyme or reason. Why are sunsets beautiful? Why is the sky is blue? Why? Why is Breaking Bad not the best TV show of all time? It just is. <laughs> You're, you're pretty on point there. I mean, there there are studies that say, I mean, first off, humans are the only mammal who maintain engorged breasts all the time. The rest of the, the mammals in, in the whole world, like, they only come out when they have young, and then they, they recede. So it, it's funny that human women always have engorged breasts, and it's... It's a thing that is supposed to, I guess, through our evolutionary traits, have shown virility and they're able to be childbearing and make a good mother and all that stuff and, and entice us in an in instinctual level to chase and conquer and do whatever. Now, we aren't able to chase and conquer like we once did. We can't carry on a big stick and hit one on the head and drag them back. But the chase is still there. We're, we're not averse to that. I mean, Mark, what do you think? Well, personally, I think there's only been a few that I've met that I didn't like. So let's get that out of the way right now. Two, I, I, think, I think you're onto something. They're, they're always covered. It's always taboo. You can't, I mean, that's like the, uh, what's hidden, uh, you know, in under the wrapping paper. Um, you know, if they were, you know, like a more of a European country where they're exposed a lot more or there's more nude beaches and things like that, maybe it might not be uh, as yeah. much on everybody. Well, who am I kidding? Yes, of course. It's, it's definitely. It's you know, definitely and, and I, I get exactly what you're way. saying because I'm kind of a biker and, and the, the mentality that I get with that is, you know. There isn't a pair of boobs that I don't want to see. I may not want to see them a second time, <laughs> but I do want to see them the first time. Right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So our next question comes from the Windy City, Chicago. Lisa 33 says, so me and three of my other girlfriends have a monthly girls night out. We're all married, but after we leave, we all take our wedding rings off until we're going home. Is this bad, Addie? Is this bad? Um, yeah, yeah. I think once you when you take that wedding ring off, you're you're starting the uh, you're going out with the intention of saying that I'm not married, that I'm not tied. You're you're giving off that vibe. So if you meet up with somebody, they're immediately going to think that you're that you're not married. So you're actually with the intention of going out there. Um, yeah, you can party with your rings on. <laughs> I mean, there's. Do you, do you think maybe they're doing it to try and score free drinks all night? Something like that, you know, something maybe just kind of innocent. They're a, a wolf pack of four four women running around together, seeing how many drinks they can score. Maybe, but I don't uh, think it's okay. So don't no. don't read it that no, way. Still dishonest. I don't no. think it's okay. No. I would I would probably yeah. you know throw my wife a stunner if she pulled that kind of thing off. <laughs> Even if it was that, I would be, um, yeah, that's so dishonest. That's going out there just being dishonest. And I th I think if you're dishonest that way, where else are you going to be dishonest? So where do you draw the line? So that's uh, that's my kind of take on it. Well, I think that's shady as shit when women do that. Like, first of all, to go out and have men buy them drinks. If there's one thing that makes me mad is when women who are married or in relationships allow men to buy them drinks knowing they have no intentions to follow through on. I, I, I mean, that makes me so mad. And the idea that you're going to go out and take off your rings, you are consciously making a choice to manipulate and deceive people. And whether it's to get drinks or whether it's to hook up with somebody, whatever the case may be, you're being shady, plain and simple. End of story. I, I agree with that. What if they were, um, what if they just needed like validation and just wanted to see, you know, if they, you know, they're attractive, if they could still get noticed, if they can still get a drink or two, but just, you know, without being way overly deceitful just to say, Hey, you know, I want to go out 
make sure I still got it, feel good about myself, go home, re-energized. I just happened, to, and this is just my own personal theory, if you are in a marriage that is worth any of its weight, you don't need other people to validate who you are or your attractiveness or anything. If you do need to go out and do that, perhaps you should be addressing that with your spouse for not making you feel a certain way. Well, I think there, I think there's a difference between a slight social experiment to see if you still have it, but it, this sounds like it's every time they go out behavior. Yeah, I think think everybody needs validation. So I would disagree to an extent that, you know, you know, it's like like um, sometimes like my wife will say, you know, she's not happy with how something looks like. I think it looks great. And, um, you know, and I'll, you know, kind of in, 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 you know, kind of hint that, oh, well, if I think it looks good, it should be okay. But she still wants it to look good. So I think, you know, and I can understand that. And I'm the same way. So I think we all we all need some level of validation. It's it's the question is, what extent are we going to go to to get that validation? So, yeah, you know, to, it's, it's to one thing. Deceit. Or Ryan, she doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Do she doesn't stop. It's one thing just- like dress. She doesn't stop just at your opinion. She calls her friends. She calls her brother. She calls <laughs> yeah, a few yeah, people. Exactly. Hey, what do you think of this? Well, and then collectively. Well, no, here's what happens. What happens is, so she'll put something on and uh, and we'll say, you know, how does this look? And I'll see it looks great. And then she'll call my stepson in and say, how does this look? And then she'll call my stepdaughter. In, and if they disagree with me, their opinion usually wins out. So it's like, you may as well not ask me. Just ask the kids. All right. So our next question comes all the way from Sacramento. Chad, he's 28, says, I just found out my wife is cheating on me. I kind of want to stay with her, but I don't want her to go without being punished. Can you recommend anything? Ryan, I know you have your own (laughs) red room. What kind of punishment (laughs) can you do? My name is Reek. (laughs) I'd say get, I mean, my thought is, so if it's, first you have to ask, can you get over it? So if you can get over it, and not hold it against her and you trust and you and for whatever reason you feel like you can trust her and you want to work it out fine but if you don't feel like you can get over it then then exit because it's, it's just never gonna fix itself um I, you can't punish her like at the end of the day you know if you want her back you want her back because you want to be together punishment is stupid now i will say if there's something you really really want and she hasn't given in on it and if she really wants to be back in the relationship too this is your chance to ask for like whatever you want so you know whatever your heart's desire that she said no to before this Anal. is a chance to ask for it <laughs> sure <laughs> whatever it is and so that's what i say. I'd say i'd say don't go for punishment but go for something that maybe she would have said no to you know in the past that you can get away with now otherwise like it's not about punishing it's about can you accept it and get over it and trust her and if you can't um i would i would exit as quickly as possible well you can't have it both ways you can't stay with someone just to torture them until you feel better about it because you're going to do major major damage to whatever is left of the the foundation of the relationship um i know a couple like this they continue to go back and forth one will cheat on one one will cheat on the other and it seems like the only reason they stay together is just to punish you each other and they're just frankly both miserable yeah it a house like that won't stand um it's time to move on uh, you know i don't know if i would leverage something i don't know i mean everybody makes mistakes and if you can get over it and move on together as a couple then that's great but if, if you don't think you can forgive her then you either need to take a, a large break maybe seek couples counseling or just call it a day yeah, I agree with you guys. I mean, you can't just punish somebody. I mean, yeah, maybe what what Ryan said, you know, you wanted that motorcycle. She said, no, now's your chance. But at the end of the day, I mean, what if this happens again? What then? I mean, are you prepared to keep going in this relationship if this continues to happen? And you need to make yourself aware of that because not every time. It's not an exclusive thing where if they cheat once, they're going to cheat again. But... You know, it's a better than 50% time where if they're cheating, they're going to continue cheating, especially if it's not ending in any bad repercussions for them. And the bad repercussion here would be you ending your marriage. That would be a repercussion to her. So you have to decide, like you said, can you get over it? Can you live with the fact that when you were in what's supposed to be a monogamous relationship that she decided to make it not so? 
I so I agree with you guys absolutely. Jules, what do you think? Well, I was just going to add too. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I missed this, but how? However, that person found out. Did he find out she was cheating because she told him she was cheating, or because he found out she was cheating? Because that also adds a different layer to things too. Because if, if I'm coming to you and I'm being like, I'm 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 racked with guilt. I can't handle this anymore. I've been doing this. That's going to give me confidence confidence in that other person to say they are regretful and remorseful about what has happened. Whereas if I find out, then it's going to, I'm going to definitely have a harder time getting over it. But it's like what uh, Cynic was saying and everything. It's either you have to like, you know, agree to just let things go if you want to work things out and, and seek marriage counseling or whatever. But if you feel like you're the type of person that is never fully going to get over this, then you should just part ways. All right. So our next question comes from heaven. She's 20 living in Phoenix and says, I just started dating this pretty nice guy. And after three days, he's already saying, I love you. What the fuck? All right, Addie. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, for some people, they, they feel that emotion a lot sooner. Now, yeah, after just three days, I would be a little like, um, this is moving along a little too quickly. But um, some people are passionate that way. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I would probably tell them to put the brakes on. They might be a little stalkerish. I don't know. Like you have to assess the situation of, um, you know, was it in the heat of the moment and it was like, oh, I love you. And, or was it, hey, I love you. You know, like it, it's all really in the, in the context as well, you know. Well, the way I read this is his saying, so like multiple times, like repeatedly, I love you. And my answer to that would be run. <laughs> run fast run to the hills get out of there go somewhere uh change your address get a name change call the fbi see if they have any openings in the, the witness protection program something I, i'm not staying it just sort be of remind, romantic come on sort of reminds me of uh, minority report when they're in the farmhouse and the pre the precog starts screaming run at the top of her voice. That's what I would be hearing <laughs> in that situation. I would probably turn around and leave immediately. All I know is every every man who's ever told me they love me, and it's been a, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot, but uh, the ones I love that have, you, Jules. <laughs> the ones that have told me within the first few minutes have all been psychopaths. <laughs> <laughs> First few minutes. <laughs> this one at least waited three days. Oh well, my God! You know. No, you're safe now. I'm sorry, Kevin. You're okay. She's got minutes. You got three days. I must be way well, off here. It was the uh, was the guy's name by chance? George Costanza? No. I, mean, I never get "I love you" back. I said it once to a dog, and what happened? He licked himself and he left the room. Again, if it's uh, if it's playful, like if you're a gamer and uh, you go in and and you see that she's a gamer too, and you're like, man, I fuck and love you you know that's one thing but if it's like really serious puppy dog love you better run good advice good advice all around everybody next question comes from orlando stephanie's 24 she says at 24 i'm pretty sure i don't want kids i talked to my doctor about getting my tubes tied and they said they wouldn't do it because of my age and the fact that i didn't already have kids What's going on? Jules, got any insight? Well, I think a lot of times uh, 24 is a, is a really young age because I'll tell you, when I was about 20, I said, I'm never having kids. And ironically, a week later, I found out I was pregnant. But that's a whole different story. <laughs> so what can happen is when you're young is you definitely feel like you don't want kids and you want to, you know, just live that single life. But there is nothing wrong with going on some sort of per, uh, uh, birth control that lasts a couple years because they have things like that. But to make a permanent uh, decision like getting your tubes tied, which is a surgery. That's not just something, you know, real quick and easy. You're talking about an actual surgery and it's a very permanent decision at 24. You really, really need to think that one through. I, I would have to agree with any doctor that would say not to do it because at 24, it's not exactly what you want at 34 for most people. And I think that 
that's just something you need to sleep on and just maybe keep, you know, with some semi semi permanent birth controls in the sense of for a couple years, but certainly don't make any permanent changes to your body like that. There's an IUD right now that will last for up to 10 years. Yeah. You know, you've got very good solutions out there right now that, you know, if in 10 years you don't want one, a doctor probably be more than happy to t- tie your tubes up for you. But at this point, there are long-term solutions that are quick and easy to do. I mean, you may be uncomfortable for a day or two after receiving an IUD. I mean, other things are less. So there's an implant that's like three years and, you know, you can get the shot every quarter, every three months and that works. Or you take a pill every day and that sucks because you got to remember to do it. And if you don't, you might get pregnant. But the IUD, they put that in 10 years, the copper one. And that one I've, I've read a lot about and it's it doesn't mess with your hormone balances in your body. So you don't generate any of the other problems that come with birth control pills, which was like weight gain or acne or other things like that. It's just a thing that stops eggs from implanting in the cervix. So there are options and it does make sense at 24 because, you know, quite honestly, my wife and I knew each other for many years and I heard constantly, I don't want any more kids when we were friends. When we got together, it did not take long to let's have a kid. And I'm so happy she did. And if she had had her tube side previously, we wouldn't have the children we have today. And I and I love my children and I'm glad that I have them. You know, so it's it's things that your life will change. And sometimes it'll change over one year, sometimes five, sometimes 10. But give yourself the option. Well, Ig, not long ago, I decided I didn't want kids. And to be honest, they took it kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, in that situation, you just have to kind of stay fluid. That's, that's your decision today. It might not be what you want tomorrow. You know, if you're going to do something drastic, then, you know, you can have things frozen and kept for a little while. Or I don't know what the expiration date on on those type of things are, but you know, you have to have a backup plan because you can always change your mind. All right. Our next question comes from Kansas city. Sheila's 25. She says, my crush finally asked me out. He wants to go out Friday night for drinks. I don't drink. Do you think this will end badly? Cynic? Well, are you going to drink regardless of whether you drink or not? Because if not, most people will be accepting of the fact that you don't partake. But if you're going to go and overdo it, then you're, you know, you're kind of opening up the door for bad things to happen to you. Not just potential sexual assault, but maybe possibly throwing up all over them or, you know, making a scene if you're not aware of how your body's tolerance to alcohol is. Um, Skip the drinks. Be uh, forward and honest about what your tolerances are, and maybe you should go bowling. Oh, yeah. You've got to be yourself straight up forward, and uh, yeah, you don't have to drink. Just skip the drinks. Go and enjoy it. Enjoy the uh, the time with the, with your crush, but... Um, well, if it's, a, if it's a place like, you know, more of a club than a bar, like they have music, they have a dance floor, things like that, there's nothing wrong with ordering a Coke and having a good time, and if he's like, well, you know, I... You can have anything you want. It's not about price. You know, order the most expensive drink here. And then you go, well, you know, I don't really drink. and But, you know, I want to be here with you. I'm having a good time. And it'll be fine. Just, just don't focus on it. If you focus on it, then it becomes awkward. And then it becomes strange. And then they go, what am I, what the, what am I doing? And the other side is you don't give them any shit if they are drinking. Because, you know, there's nothing worse than that. I mean, somebody that's like, well, I don't drink because... X, Y, Z, whatever. If they drink, that's fine. If they're overdoing it, then you know that's not somebody you want to be around. But just because you don't drink, you don't have to drink. You don't have to tell them, well, I don't drink. You don't have to be uppity about it. You can let them drink. You can have a Coke. You can have a 7-Up. You can have a Kool-Aid. I don't care. What's some of those other drinks they may have? (coughs) They might have coffee, (laughs) milk, chocolate milk, (laughs) strawberry milk. (laughs) Next question comes from Middletown, New York. Ed says, I've been at my job for five years and I've had a strict no dating policy. But just recently, they hired a new manager and he looks just like Brad Pitt. I can't stop thinking about him. I'm not sure he's gay. I know he's married with kids, but I'm getting that vibe from him. Should I lay my cards on the table? Could I risk losing my job and being shot down at the same time? You know, Marcus, this seems up your alley. 
Uh, did I hear married with kids in there? Right, but might be gay. Uh, there's a whole lot of no in that bag. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I, I think you, I, I think you could admire from afar, and uh, and leave it at that because there's a whole lot of reasons to stay away. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to agree with Mark. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, no, you're admire from afar. Enjoy it, but um, yeah, you don't want to get into the middle of uh, somebody being married with children and things that whether they're gay or 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 not. I'm sorry, Julie. <laughs> Jules, does he have any hope? Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, no. <laughs> Just stay she, away. She said yes. <laughs> she said no, yes. She would go I, for it. I would Luke, not. <laughs> put the cards on the table. Jules said put the cards on the table. Brad Pitt. Maybe it. if it was married with children. Married with children and gay. I mean, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That I agree with Mark. That's a whole lot of no there. <laughs> Just run. I I'm sorry. <laughs> run now. <laughs> All right. Our next question comes from Toledo, Ohio. Cammy's forty one. She says, "I'm in a long term relationships of twenty years, but I've been so busy with work and kids that my husband and I have grown apart." Recently, I checked his browser history, and he's been watching a large amount of porn while I'm not home. Should I approach him? Also, and I'm embarrassed and scared to ask, but what is a cuckold? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I like Cynic? how me and Addie both said, what? I, what? <laughs> Cynic, this, this screams cynic. This screams like you need to answer this. Well, uh, what was your name again? Cammy, I don't think you should ever really judge a guy by his browser history. Uh, you know, <laughs> way <laughs> to protect yourself. But if you're going to, <laughs> but if you're going to uh, a cuckold is a gentleman that likes to watch his significant other with another gentleman. That's a nice way of putting it. Um, I don't know. You know, you may want to have a discussion with him about it. You may want to just leave it alone. I mean. As long as he's uh, abusing himself, he's not out there abusing anybody else. So, you know, it, it, as long as he keeps his hands, hands to himself and on, on the keyboard and on the mouse, I, th I think the relationship is pretty strong. Most of these things that people do online are just fantasies. However, if he approaches you about being with someone else, then the ball's now firmly in your court. Uh, yeah, that's a tricky one. I think, I mean, if he can... I, I would say if he completely denies looking at anything and he is, then maybe you can question him. But if it's just a matter of him maybe looking at more, you, you basically answered it for yourself. Like there's some distance in the relationship and, uh, you know, he needs to fill his needs somewhere else. And, you know, you can dive down a crazy rabbit hole where you're looking at someone's history could be misleading. Um, so I, I wouldn't... Uh, wouldn't put too much stock into it, assuming it's not, you know, he's not looking at anything that's really insane or horrible. Uh, so, yeah, it's, like I said, I, I think I would be reluctant to approach him. I think you should just you guys should work together to try to fix your own relationship and add, you know, some more intimacy. And, yeah, just try to work on the relationship and not worry about, like, you know, bothering him about his browsing history. All right. But to the women on the show, what would be more offensive if you found the porn in in my browser, I mean his browser, <laughs> or you found him perusing dating sites. Oh, right, dating Jules, sites, what do you think yeah. about that? Um, I would be more offended for sure if he was perusing dating sites because a hundred percent, I I don't really take issue with um porn. I I mean, not me personally. I I know men are men, and sometimes it relieves me of my duties. No, I'm just. I'm, <laughs> Making it or your spouse watching it? <laughs> no, oh. I, that's one thing. Like, I completely feel like that is, you know, not something to flip out because it is a fantasy. But where I would take huge issues is if they're on a dating site, because that is them actually wanting to meet somebody and find somebody that that's a tangible person that they can reach out to and and start a relationship you, with. You would be more offended over like Ashley Madison or some yes. tender or something yes, like that. Yes, for sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, let me blow every woman who is listening to this. Let me blow your minds. Oh, here we every go. Every 
single man that you've ever been with, are with now, or will be with in the future, while you're in the relationship with them, watches porn. All of them. And they always will because it is it and it has nothing to do with sex. It has nothing to do with whether or not you're having sex with them. It has nothing to do with how often you have sex. It has nothing to do with you at all. It is simply just how men's minds are typically wired that they will look at that. Why do you think things like Playboy and Hustler and Penthouse and all those things existed and thrived? Until the internet came around. Because now we don't even have to order it or pay for it or anything. It just comes in on the computer on the internet that everybody uses. It has been and will always be something that men do. And and it has nothing to do with you. It's not that the men don't love you. It's not that they don't find you attractive. It's that not that they think that anything they're watching on the screen is something that they actually want to do. It's about... Watching, it's just like watching Star Wars as a five year old is watching porn <laughs> as a 25 year old. What? That's not the Star Wars I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of lightsabers, they're just made out of something different. All right, our next question comes from Oceanside, California. Sean is 24 and he says, My girlfriend and I have been having relationship issues because of her flat out refusal to remove her pets from the bedroom while we're having sex. While we are being intimate, her dog Dwight and her cat Pam, yes, she's an Office fan, sit on the bed and stare at us. I'm not going to lie, it's caused performance issues. Don't get me wrong, I love pets, but this is out of control. I need your help and maybe a rabies shot. All right, what do you got, Cynic? You know, this is a rough one, but this is, uh, it's not going to endear me to a lot of people, but this pet obsession where we're putting um, pets over people has gotten way out of control. I mean, they, they feel the need to take them everywhere. They feel the need. I saw somebody the other day try to bring a dog into a restaurant. And, uh, you know, if she's not willing to at least shoo them off the bed, because, you know, they're watching you and they're probably judging your performance. And they're probably like, I don't even need another person to reach that spot. She may not be the right person for you. I don't know. I I really love my little fur baby up on the bed with me, but (laughs) I could explain why I don't have children. But... (laughs) Performance issues, but um, no, I I think uh, you got to find a compromise and maybe put uh, put the dogs out of the room and put the pets out of the room for for a little while. But yeah, I have seen those staring eyes watching, <laughs> cold nose in play. No, anyway, um, moving along, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one cat, and it's definitely not hanging out. That was the cat. These <laughs> 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 <Just> headphones. <laughs> yeah. The cat has struck again. The cat's like, I'll hang out where I please. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would not want an animal sitting there watching me. I, I, I completely agree with you, Joe, about that. That's just too much. <laughs> A good friend of mine said once he... Uh, had their dog watch them that the dog now tries to hump her leg thinking that she's like com- what? she's like communal property. Oh, disgusting. He said, hey, he never used to do that until he watched me do it. <laughs> so he was humping her leg? <laughs> all right. That's the way to do it, ladies and gentlemen. That whatever we've all been doing so far has been wrong. Marcus, let us know. You really want to want to get a woman hot. Hump her leg. Hump her leg. I can guarantee that is not the way to do it. Anyway, next question comes from Dennis in Buford, South Carolina. He's 17. It says, I started dating a girl a few months ago, and she refuses to go all the way before marriage. Seems odd, but I respect her for that. However, she agreed to give me oral instead. I was super excited, and the first time we did it, listen, I'm not very experienced, but it was amazing. When I told my best friend about it, he laughed and asked me, how many guys do you think it took for her to get that good at it? Should I ask her? Should I break it off? Should I just keep my mouth shut? I mean, we kind of answered that earlier. If, you know, ask yourself, do, you know, what answers am I willing to accept you know and and if and if you know if 
if anything is going to bother you, you might not want to ask the question just again, out of sight, out of mind, uh, you know, but if you want to explore that, then be ready to hear an answer that, you know, isn't one or two. Uh, and if you're okay with that, then, you know, ask away. But if you're not okay with that, then again, you, you probably want to want to rethink it and, and just, just keep it out of your mind and, and pretend in your mind that it was nobody and you're the first and she just happens to have those skills. 37 in a <laughs> row? <laughs> I was going to say, there's only one answer that is okay. If if, If it's 37. If a girl came up to you and was like, I've given like, you know, 53 guys blowjobs, but I've never had sex. Does that bother (laughs) you? No, but we'll get you a spot on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Is that why Mark is here? (laughs) Yes. Yes, it is. So our next question comes from Billings, Montana. Amber's 24. She says, Dear podcast peeps, I started dating this guy about six months ago, and he finally broke down and introduced me to his family. Anyway, there's a 20-year age difference between his dad and his stepmom, which puts his mom closer to his age than his dad's. I guess that's common nowadays. However, what troubles me is his stepmom insists on not only hanging all over my boyfriend, but she always kisses him goodbye on the mouth and it freaks me out am i overreacting what should i do mark do you does your mother still kiss you on the mouth no but yours does <laughs> <laughs> my mother kisses it's, everybody on the mouth it's true she does open mouth typically yeah i think that's absolutely too far uh i would uh, talk with your stepmom and and uh try and set some healthy boundaries there no, this yeah, is the, the girlfriend. girlfriend's offended. This is the girlfriend yeah, yeah. about her boyfriend. Her boyfriend kisses his stepmom on oh, the mouth. So talking to her mother ain't going to do nothing. Her boyfriend on the mouth. <laughs> no, her her boyfriend's stepmom is kissing her <laughs> yeah. boyfriend on the mouth. <laughs> I'm just creeped out now. <laughs> that is a hard question. It's kind of like, you know, does the boyfriend seem offended by it? Is it some people are kissy like that. I mean, as long as there wasn't like a slip of a tongue, I mean, I really think that some people are just affectionate in different ways. I happen to know somebody who likes to kiss me on the mouth. That's like an in-law of somebody else in my family. And it really is uncomfortable to me, but that's how he does it. And I'm like, all right, whatever. But, um, I definitely think if this, if your boyfriend's not bothered by it and he's used to it and and it doesn't appear that he has some sort of thing for his stepmom, I don't think it's that big of an issue. They save the tongue for the holidays. I guess. (laughs) I don't know. The, the, the age gap being much closer seems a little, odd and especially since it's a stepmother it's not his his actual mother that yeah, that like makes being, it a little I, I just feel like a little strange if you're the quote parent in that situation like i'm uh, my wife's a little bit older and so i i'm 36 and my two step kids are yeah this is, uh, <laughs> and my step kids are 22 and 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 19 and um when you know in that situation where they're older you know, clo- I mean, not they're not that close to my age, but they're closer to my age than than you would think uh, someone who would who would, know, who you would think would be my kid would be. Um, you, it's you don't have that kind of relationship that you might build with with somebody that you you've um you know that affection that you that you would have developed with them you know as a kid, and and so it's really weird that she is that affectionate with him. I just I, I like I find I just find it strange because again I could I could see it of like if you raise the kid and and uh, you know when they you know when they were a couple years old and. and and brought them up that that you may have that kind of bond but that's a weird bond to develop with somebody that's that close to your age um that you met as an adult basically so i i do think it's a little weird and maybe i don't know maybe i'd talk to him about it and see you know ask him what he thinks and if he thinks it's weird and how that it, it, was it like that right away or did it develop how to develop i don't know it's a little strange to me is there any other red flags besides that? I mean, is there any other boundaries that you feel creeped out by? You know, it, you, you kind of have to set your um, your danger meter appropriately, you know, as you kind of notice these things. So if that's the only thing that's that's tripping off your, uh, you know, your radar right now, then I think you're probably OK. But you know, keep your eyes out for other thing that gets into, you know, other 
uh, porn categories, uh, as we discussed <laughs> earlier. So our next question comes from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Luke says, my otherwise prudish fiance recently expressed interest in a threesome. While my heart said awesome, I downplayed it to her and said that it's not something I've given thought to. How do I figure out whether this bit is a trap? Because I would love to, and she has some hot friends. Ryan, you've got some hot friends. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I guess it depends on how your relationship. Uh, if you, if you, th- if if you're, if it's enough for you to think it's a trap, then it probably ma- is. Maybe it's a trap. Yeah. So, and I guess the other question is, if you said yes, and it was a trap. Would it be kind of a fun, ha ha, I was just messing with you, I'm never going to do that, and she'd leave you alone? Or would she be, you know, would she be livid and hold that against you for the next 10 years? So I would tread lightly. I guess it you know, really depends on the, the nature of your own relationship and uh, what the consequences are if, if, she, if it is a trap. How will she, you know, react to that or you, to you expressing interest? Cynic, is it worth the trap to maybe get a threesome? Well, this is a lot like the gay Brad Pitt married situation. It's it's a huge risk reward uh, type deal where is your relationship worth the chance for the experience and the story you may have compared to <laughs> if you answer the wrong way, uh, the repercussions which will follow. If it's going across your mind that it, if it's running across your mind that it might be a trap, it's probably a trap and you should just keep moving with it. I think you should just play supportive and just say, <laughs> honey, I'm there for you and all of your needs. <laughs> you know, if this is something you want to experiment with, by all means, I, I'm there for you. Until she whips out Ryan's name. And, and I want it with right. Ryan. <laughs> oh, a devil's threesome, not an angel's threesome. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so our next question comes from the great white north of Fargo, North Dakota. Greg is 34 and he says, urgent help needed my wife found my porn stash if that wasn't bad enough i'm into some pretty depraved shit while none of it is illegal it's bad enough that she may consider filing for a divorce in the moment i denied it being mine and blamed it on my son my wife accepted the excuse but wants to confront our son do I come clean and risk divorce or beg my son to take one for the team? Mark, are you going to beg your son to take one for the team? Keep keep your significant other away from your porn stash? Absolutely not. I would totally jump on that grenade because, uh, you know, my my wife and I, you know, we're into <laughs> S&M. She sleeps and I masturbate anyway. So because of that, there's those peripheral things that have to happen. Um but, uh, you know, you just come clean. Uh, you talk those things out with her. Maybe there's some things that, you know, um, the communication might help with your fantasies, those type of things. And maybe over time you might not have to have that porn stash anymore. And, and who has porn stashes anymore? I don't know if this is like, um, you know, a hand me down from, uh, the <laughs> person's grandfather or something like that, because pretty much, you know, any device, uh, is, is pretty, uh, accessible nowadays. So maybe it's vintage, like, you know, comic book collecting and, uh, there's all sorts of shapes and sizes of things in there that that he's fond of. But no, I think just come well, clean. If it's vintage, couldn't you just claim it as it has a monetary value? You know, that's you why you have it. You know, plus, I don't think any vintage porn, by the way, is going to be so depraved. Somebody's going to want to divorce you. You'd I think surprised. that's a, a recent thing that's come around. <laughs> no, that, no, that's not true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, Listen to that's Addy. definitely You'd be not surprised. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What has Addie got in her closet? I don't want to know. Don't answer that. (laughs) Nothing but hockey porn. (laughs) (laughs) That's some pretty depraved shit right there. I mean, come on, everybody. Say it with me. Google Chrome has incognito mode. It saves nothing. If you don't have Google Chrome on whatever device you're using to watch your porn, what are you doing, man? (laughs) I didn't even know that existed. (laughs) But every man does. Absolutely. No, Mark's like, thanks a lot, Dick. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is even if they know it exists, they can go look and th- there's no record of anything he's watched on it. So good luck. It doesn't keep any bookmarks, any history, any cookies, nothing. Come on, everybody. You can get through today's world in porn without leaving a trace. 
at least try that. But yeah, you got to jump on the grenade for this one. You can't blame the sun. Leaving a trace on your browser, you mean. Next question comes from Jesus in Denver. It says, my girlfriend is a screamer, which is awesome. The only problem is that I live in an apartment with paper thin walls and all of my neighbors have been giving me nasty looks. I asked my girlfriend if she could turn it down and she said that this was all or nothing. What should I do? Drive my neighbors crazy or ruin my sex life? <laughs> uh, I think two words. Ball gag. I think that's more uh, hyphenated. Maybe yeah. should, they should go to the, to the store. <laughs> Could be. Depends on if you're Canadian or not. <laughs> Is this a device yes. or some sort of position I'm unaware of? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little from column A, little from column B. Yeah, you know, face down in a pillow, try, you know, relieving that pressure some other way. You know, there's there's lots of different ways to, you know, try and and mute yourself, so to speak. Maybe pick different hours too. I, I'm not sure. Maybe, you know, a little after afternoon delight. I don't know. <laughs> I would wonder how close you are with your neighbors that you would care whether or not they give you dirty looks. I mean, if you're not all that close with them, if you don't aren't having weekly barbecues and, you know, attending each other's kids baseball games or soccer games because y'all are crazy, then I don't know. I mean, if, if you aren't doing things with these people, then let them look at you. you it's probably not angry looks that they're giving you. If it's guys, they're probably looking at you like, damn, man, what can I do to get my girl to do that stuff? What spot are you hitting? What are you doing? I mean, if it's not several times a day, I would probably give my neighbor a high five every time I saw him. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next question comes from Oakland. Chris asks, I've recently started dating a woman that is 15 years my senior. I'm 37 and she's 52. Things have progressed incredibly fast and I've never been so infatuated with someone or as intensely connected. I don't mind the age difference, but I want kids and that ship has sailed for her. She also has no interest in adoption. What should I do? This is the only woman that I've ever truly loved. Addie, any advice? Well, you know, if that ship is sailed, then you've got to move on. If she definitely doesn't want children, then as much as you love her, if, if children for is going to be the deal breaker for you, then it's time to move on. You kind of, you know, hopefully you'd had that conversation before you got into the, uh, into the relationship. But um, no, definitely if... At 50-something, starting children, would it be really fair to the children even to be at that age? But um, no, I would say if you if you really want children, then you've got to find somebody else. That's a hard question. Again, it kind of comes back to this age question, but it really just depends on how 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 desperate you are to have kids is if this is your like one true love this is the only person you've ever loved maybe kids don't necessarily have to play into your scenario of life together maybe you can just spend your lives out together traveling and and doing things in in other ways that just helps your love to grow and and you accept that kids aren't a part of your ultimate plan but if that is something that is just a deal breaker for you and it, you're, or you're just desperate to to have kids. I mean, you are going to have to accept that and then break it off because it's it's not going to change. So why keep the relationship going longer if that's something that you're really yearning for? So I would I would say, I mean, yeah, like everyone, you have to kind of prioritize. You know, what's what's more important? So maybe visual, think about your life in 10 years or whatever, you know, without this kind of love. Imagine you never have that. And how would you feel about yourself in your life? And then think about your life in the future without kids. And how would you feel about your life? How would you think about your life? And I guess consider which future is more important to you. If it's more important that you have this connection, then go for it. If it's more important that you have kids, um, then you got to end it. But my selfishly, I would say maybe stick with it uh, because at the end of the day, y you can have kids for a long time. And so if it doesn't work out in five years, then you can work on it then where if you lose this now, you can't just start working on finding the love of your life again. So my my gut would say try to maybe see this through if you can 
if you're okay not having kids, because again, seeing this through means you have the love of your life and there's still always the option to possibly have kids, whether you can convince her to adopt or it doesn't work out and you go have kids. So yeah, I would say that's, that's what I think, but I, I think you'd have to think about what, what future you'd rather have. Well, if it's that important to you, um, I saw this movie called The Room not too long ago. And what you do is you get yourself a tool shed and a van <laughs> and, so... and on, the, on the side of the van, you put fruit puppies and candy oh, and eventually you'll get as many kids uh... as you can handle. And uh, problem solved. I'm just of the mind that we should all be looking, especially he's kind of getting to that age where, like, like Ryan said, if he in 10 years, like it hasn't worked out, you know, he's at that point where trying to get a newborn might be a problem because you can have a hard time keeping up when they get older. But maybe he adopts a 17 year old Korean girl at that point. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Woody Uh, Allen. (laughs) Wow. And that's going to do it for episode 34 of the Cynic Radio Podcast, bringing you a little bit of what is love. I'm Edgar He. With me this week has been Cynic. Also joining us has been Ryan George from the Jim Wits Podcast, Jules, Mark, and Addy. We had a great time this week. We want to read more questions like these, so send them to us in the future. In the meantime, share this podcast, like it, comment on it, share it with all your friends, and keep coming back and listening. We're going to have new and better things every week. You got to come and listen. And until then, send us your comments, questions, concerns, and maybe a little bit of penicillin to cynicradio at gmail.com. Find us on the internet at cynicradio.com. Look for us on Facebook at facebook.com slash cynicradio and find us on Twitter at cynicradio. And until next time, don't get captured. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and at cynicradio.com. Available for download on iTunes. Upper leg.